Hello there kitties, I'm Carrie, the Vacuum Tube Witch, and I promised that I would do a little review of uh, the, the book that uh, I um, recently had um, much pleasure to read. Open Circuits, The Inner Beauty of Electronic Components by uh, Eric Schlepfer and Winter H. Oskay. Eric Schlepfer is a YouTuber. His channel is named uh, Tube Time US. And Wendell uh, is um, the, the genius behind uh, Evil Mad Scientist. That uh, they, um, they made the book uh, together the book was reviewed by uh, Ken Sheriff uh, from uh, the Curious Marx uh, team because uh, because uh, Ken is quite uh, quite knowledgeable, quite uh, quite an accomplished uh, electronic engineer. I respect him a lot. And uh, Curious Mark uh, also made a video about uh, this book, about uh, making it, uh, about the effort that went into making it. Uh, he did a few interviews. I don't have a uh, possibility to do any interviews, but uh, I was a little bit surprised. Uh, when uh, it turned out that uh, one of the people at our local hackerspace um, had this very book and uh, and he borrowed and uh, I borrowed it uh, from him and uh, took a look at it uh, it's breathtaking and uh, we'll go through every page all the electronic devices uh, it may be a surprise uh, what's inside of them all those components that uh, even if you are an uh, electronic engineer and um, design circuit uh, use those components uh, sometimes you don't even know what's uh, inside of them how they are built and some of them are so intricate, so beautiful, that uh, they're simply works of art. So let's go to the bench, take a look at this fascinating book. I would say it's a uh, must read for anyone who does anything with uh, electronics, both uh, professionally and uh, as an uh, amateur. Let's get to the bench. And here we are. The cover shows um, a cross section uh, through a multi layer printed circuit board uh, with um, a system on a chip uh, soldered underneath. And the cat is very interested uh, in uh, what's going on here. Kitty. Made by No Starch Press in San Francisco. Copyright 2023. So this is the book from the future. And now, I will really have to ask people who has a DeLorean DMC-12 to have brought it to me in the first place. And the cat again. Please, kitty. Please, kitty. Do you really have to do it right now? And the, Conan, the contents of the book... Uh, First, uh, the simple stuff uh, of passive components like resistors, capacitors, uh, quartz oscillators, um, all kinds of different 
types of uh, of capacitors of thermal fuses some of those components even though they are passive components um, they are very interesting semiconductors the um, diodes the transistors the integrated circuits electromechanical components like switches like relays cables connectors retro tech which is of course uh, the thing that uh, fascinates me the most and then the composite devices like uh, printed circuit boards um, or some advanced uh, systems uh, on a, a chip acknowledgements um, to the people who made uh, making this uh, project possible because uh, if you watched uh, Curious Mark's video on it, um, you will know that um, the whole project of um, taking those components apart, photographing them, preparing them, them uh, it took uh, a few years. It it was uh, it was definitely a whole lot of work, and uh, I absolutely appreciate um, the work that was. Uh, put into making this book. It's simply fantastic. The introduction. Some uh, some insights uh, of the on the today's technology and uh, how we treat technology. We cradle our seamless phones in our hands like cool river smoothed stones. They feel pleasing to touch. One kind of phone might seem better than another, now, not because of its technological merits, but because of how it looks and feels. This is by design. This is design. Industrial designers, engineers and artists spend countless hours adjusting every curve, color and texture. Good design appeals to our physical senses and ultimately to our sense of elegance. This is, uh, this is the part that uh, we see. This is the part that we see. That, uh, this is the part that we feel, we can touch, we can smell. We can weigh in our hand like I am weighing this roll of solder. This is what appeals to our senses. Uh, and this is what we perceive and what we judge the design, what we judge the device uh, based on. But uh, in order to truly appreciate the work of technology, and uh, also the art uh, that went into it. You have to apply some knowledge and some deeper look into into the device uh, you are dealing with. And uh, this book is uh, is really the means to take a closer look. Uh, even if you haven't uh, ever seen a uh, teardown of an electronic device, if, even if you haven't um, taken anything apart, even if you haven't uh, built stuff, uh, take this book, uh, look into all those teeny tiny parts, how intricate they look and appreciate the effort that uh, went into designing them, into building them. This is quite an unusual start, starting with a 32 kilohertz uh, quartz crystal. A very intricate construction that I never realized that uh, it would be in fact, uh, something like a tuning fork. It's more of an uh, electromechanical component and uh, we will uh, look at some more quartz uh, oscillators in the electromechanical devices part or the composite devices. 
the most common stuff, um, the resistors, the, the carbon film resistors are very cheap and uh, easy, uh, easily available. That's how they look. A spiral of um, a very specific thickness and width and length um, because uh, it's just um, multiple turns on the resistive and uh, and uh, thermally durable enough to withstand the rated power piece of uh, ceramic. A high stability in film resistor, this looks like um, a high-end component meant to have uh, as little change in uh, its uh, resistance uh, through the change uh, in ambient uh, temperature and, um, and the component's temperature. The wire wand resistors uh, quite common and uh, often used uh, in amplifiers and power circuits that's that's how it looks like on the outside and um, you see the, the cement uh, powered into the ceramic case this would be the cross section uh, like uh, like if we have a knife. Do I call it a knife? Let's call it a knife. If we if we slice the resistor this way, we will see exactly what it looks like. There is uh, always some commentary on uh, each one of those parts. Uh, Sometimes um, some uh, interesting or important information is shared. A uh, resistor ladder, it's, uh, it's not really that common in electronic devices, but uh, test equipment uh, uses a lot of those. And here you can see how exactly each one of those individual resistors uh, are trimmed uh, with a laser to have um, the precise um, resistance uh, called for in the parts design. A very common component uh, SMD resistors and um, thin film uh, resistor arrays. Um, this is also a domain uh, of uh, high-end uh, electric and electronic uh, equipment like um, some good grade uh, multimeters, uh, oscilloscopes and that sort of stuff. Scientific medical equipment. And uh, those are also laser trimmed. And uh, looking at uh, the at the leads uh, that looks like balls, uh, it's uh, it's the same kind of assembly as BGI chips. We'll go on to the BGI chips pretty soon. The real stat uh, wire wand uh, potentiometer or variable resistor, if it has uh, two terminals. Pretty common in uh, antique electronic devices. Big, heavy, but magnif magnificent. Trimmer pot uh, is uh, made with uh, ceramic uh, element uh, with ceramic disc. Uh, good quality part. Those trim pots, um, they don't use um, the phenolic or plastic uh, base uh, that you would uh, often find in, uh, in some uh, lower end uh, trim pots. 
Like, uh, like here. Uh, this is also a uh, Ceramat uh, Trampot. An old Polish one. And uh, Heli Trim Potentiometers. Uh, the multi turn kind that allow for precise adjustment of the resistance often used for calibrating test equipment multi turn uh, potentiometers that uh, are used uh, on the human interfaces of the devices like you see on this oscilloscope The regular ceramic disc capacitors, like this, like this teeny tiny thing, cut uh, through just uh, it's just uh, cut down uh, like um, like this. Glass capacitors, I haven't really seen uh, one of those in, uh, in my um, life and uh, work in electronics. Multi-layer ceramic capacitors, those are very common uh, electronic parts. And uh, tube time you was um, once um, Noticed that uh, if you have something like uh, an uh, vintage looking capacitors of uh, of modern productions, he took uh, that uh, capacitor apart and uh, it in fact uh, turned out to be the SMD MLCC with uh, wires soldered um, to the contacts on uh, on this capacitor and potted in uh, in some uh, epoxy to make it look uh, vintage so sometimes you really don't even know what's in the parts that uh, are claimed to be the real deal vintage components. Also a very common uh, component and an electrolytic capacitor. Just uh, two metal plates uh, with some uh, paper or fiber soaked with electrolyte. Film capacitors uh, made out of uh, very thin foil and um, two metal electrodes. Tantalum capacitors. I've never seen the insides of one. Pretty much the same, but uh, in the surface mount. Uh, version and now let's go on to inductors sometimes they look uh, quite confusing because uh, they are similar to resistors but generally they are shorter and thicker You have seen those uh, in uh, voltage converters. This is the part. Also, uh, sintered uh, ferrite inductors. Those parts are made by uh, making a spiral of uh, copper wire, putting it in the mold adding some uh, ferrite uh, powder and uh, pressing it um, in high temperature. 
a very simple part um, which in fact is an inductor of uh, very low inductance used mostly for high frequency interference uh, filtering another kind of filter with integrated uh, capacitor and uh, and two ferrite buds a toroidal transformer most often used as a um, common mode choke that uh, allows us to filter out uh, the common mode uh, interference uh, in uh, in balanced uh, inputs or in the power circuitry the switch mode power supply transformer those are very small and compact uh, compared to the old uh, iron uh, transformers that worked on uh, 50 or 60 hertz line frequency those transformers uh, can be made uh, very small very cheap very <coughs> lightweight because uh, the frequencies um, they operate on go into the range of uh, tens or even hundreds uh, kilohertz which means that um, the inductance of the winding can um, be kept uh, very small compared to what would you need for the mains transformer in order to get the same uh, impedance cartridge fuses also a very common component and uh, it is uh, a uh, common property of those fuses that um, the smaller the current they are supposed to blow at the higher the resistance and uh, like you see here there's even an uh, integrated uh, resistor that uh, poses some uh, obstruction to the current flow and uh, generates the heat uh, if um, the current is succeeded you have to um, take note of that uh, when designing the circuit because sometimes you might uh, run into some problems with um, unnecessary voltage drop actual lead fuels this one is generally meant to be replaced only when servicing the device and uh, the only way you can uh, check whether it's still good is by um, measuring it uh, with a multimeter and this is something completely different um, you can uh, see those fuses and uh, electrical uh, utility and the high voltage uh, utility the, the switching gear the transformer stations the, those are the high current devices uh, 15 amps but uh, if this is uh, 15 amps at uh, 23 kilovolts then the power would be a hundred um, times uh, higher than uh, the typical uh, 15 amps at uh, 230 volts that would be something like uh, three and a half hundred uh, kilowatts quite a lot compact power fuses uh, those are made of uh, ceramic or phenolic like FR4 an interesting component then the wax part uh, melts when the thing uh, overheats allowing the spring to decompress moving the contact uh, plate away breaking the contact 
quite clever. And let's move on to the active components, the semiconductors, all kinds of semi semiconductors. A regular rectifier diode. It's just a slice of silicon. One part is doped uh, positive, the other one is doped uh, negative, placed between um, the metal LEDs using uh, solder as uh, the layer between, uh, between the metal to make the contact surface better, to, to get into the pores. Some diodes uh, are still glass encapsulated. Uh, it's mostly the 1N4148 uh, and the Zener diodes. The old uh, germanium diodes uh, were also glass encapsulated. And this is the full pitch rectifier. And uh, look how it is built. Uh, it's quite clever. Like, uh, you could even uh, make one yourself uh, with uh, some wires and, uh, and diodes. Like, one, uh, like the top is uh, alternating uh, current. Um, in and um, the bottom is uh, DC current out, direct current out. The old transistors uh, with TO18 uh, enclosure, once they were pretty common, now you mostly find the um, TO92, which we will move on pretty soon. This uh, allows for some good uh, cooling because um, the, the structure has a good thermal uh, contact with the base and, uh, and the cap. <coughs> the TO92 transistor, it's, uh, it's pretty filled, um, the epoxy also provides uh, some uh, thermal mass uh, sucking away the heat um, that uh, is dissipated when the transistor is working. The TO3 enclosure, this is not a transistor but a voltage regulator. I even have one of those in my lab though it's not um, the good gold plated version. Most of the structure is the pass transistor. There are also some uh, other components like uh, a differential amplifier. The integrated circuits, uh, those look pretty old. And I never realized that uh, most of the package would be the metal contacts uh, and the die would be this um, teeny tiny square in the middle. Probably not even three by three millimeters. At Mega 328, very common if you have an Arduino then you will probably have one. And also it's mostly the LEDs and the structure is very small compared to the package. SOIC, very common, although uh, by today's standards uh, those integrated circuits are quite large. And look at this beauty. I come up color sensor in a transparent package. Look at all those uh, golden wires. TQFP, even smaller than uh, SOIC. And this is also the transparent one. 
It's a uh, sensor from uh, an optical mouse. The BGA chips, those um, have um, contacts uh, on the whole surface um, of the chip uh, in the form of, uh, of uh, thin balls uh, that melt uh, as you heat the part up. It will uh, form the contact with the printed circuit board. It's a system on a chip. More than just one integrated circuit. It's a few of those integrated circuits. This one is part of the Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, this is in fact uh, another printed circuit board called um, the redistribution layer and um, the components, uh, the integrated circuits uh, are BGA soldered um, to this uh, redistribution layer. That's why um, that's why um, reheating and uh, and reflowing, even uh, even replacing the balls uh, on the graphic um, chips um, on the on the graphic processors um, on uh, graphic cards um, doesn't uh, always. Um, repair the card if it goes broken because uh, it, those uh, those contacts may be good but those contacts may be damaged from the heat and you have no way of uh, repairing those that's what kills the graphics cards if they uh, overheat uh, this will degrade. The THT red uh, light emitting diode and uh, an SMD counterpart and uh, multicolor. And this would be the, the white, which is in fact blue, but uh, but uh, it uses uh, a fluorescent dome to shift the wavelength. A good great component, the, the laser diode with an integrated uh, sensor. Look how beautiful it is. Optocouplers and third sensors, optical encoders in the mouse, light sensors, and uh, image sensors as well. Also, a thing of beauty and a joy forever. Look at all this gold. And look at the complexity of uh, of the part. All the electromechanical components, from the simplest to the most complex parts, like a toggle switch, you can see all over the place in various kinds of devices. A uh, slide switch. I have repaired many of those. Push-button switches uh, pretty common in uh, amateur projects and dip switches. This is the rocker style, but there's also a slider style slightly different in its construction. Notice that uh, this board uh, comes from the Apple IIe computer. Vintage stuff. Tactile switches, also known as uh, tact switches, uh, very common. 
and designed by Evil Mad Scientist. <laughs> nice. Micro switches uh, very reliable parts because uh, if you click and click and click and click and click um, your mouse, uh, it really has to withstand. Otherwise, you will be mad if you can't use your mouse anymore. That's why uh, those uh, switches uh, are quite uh, rugged uh, in their constructions, though they don't really have to pass uh, high current. An industrial relay, um, a bit similar to the pretty common R15 relays. A thermal switch that is in part, uh, it's in fact uh, a um, bimetallic uh, disc that uh, deforms as it uh, heats up. It uh, it retracts, uh, and uh, and this uh, plunger no longer presses against um, the the contact enough uh, to push it all the way uh, and make contact with um, with with uh, the throw. A teeny tiny DC motor you can see in uh, cell phones and uh, a stepper motor that you notice on uh, 3D printers and CNC machines. Also a pretty common part. In fact, uh, it is a speaker with a um, um, resonant cavity. And speaking of speakers, this picture speaks for itself how it is built. It has uh, an upper and uh, lower <coughs> suspension and uh, a coil that uh, moves uh, up and down in the slot around the permanent uh, magnet. This is a very complex component um, a smartphone camera, definitely not like uh, the ones that we were talking about before. And that's how it looks inside, uh, pretty complex optics. And also the focusing mechanism uh, that uses uh, a coil and allows uh, to move the optical uh, assembly up and down and uh, this is the hard disk drive um, they will be also uh, considered uh, in the further part of the book the optical drive and uh, this is something completely different, the electrode uh, microphone. Basically a condenser mic with a built-in uh, JFET transistor for amplifying the very weak signal. This is uh, encased in an uh, aluminium uh, enclosure to protect it from outside uh, interference. Cables and connectors, the, the difference between the stranded and solid, your regular AC cord if you live in the United States. European cords would be brown, uh, blue and uh, green and white uh, for protective earth. Insulation displacement uh, connectors, uh, pretty common and very common in the computers in the 90s. Phone jacks, uh, 
not exactly phone jacks and uh, register jack uh, used uh, for the public uh, switched telephone network dip sockets the the two kinds uh, you are most likely to encounter the barrel jack now at least now i know for sure <coughs> which contact goes uh, to the barrel and to which one is switched this will go to the barrel and this is the cutoff uh, in case you have for example a, an effect pedal that has a 9 volt battery inside um, and if you connect the power supply then uh, the battery should be cut off a quarter inch uh, audio jack very component very common in uh, the world of uh, of music especially for guitars also we used on uh, headphones but uh, three and a half millimeter connector is uh, more common on headphones on uh, on computers uh, this is the microphone sockets uh, it's pink uh, and uh, by standard um, microphone sockets are color coded pink some uh, shielded cables uh, this is a uh, high quality cable this uh, this also is with some uh, reinforcement uh, that um, allows for more flexibility this is made of uh, copper coated aluminum the cheap material that uh, makes it uh, quite uh, a low grade stuff but not as low grade as this one just look at the shield and look at the braid it's uh, it's so sparse that it doesn't protect against anything and even the insulation uh, isn't uh, good on this one because uh, the copper and uh, inner and outer sheaf uh, the inner and outer insulation uh, are way off the regular f connector you use on uh, cable tv and a bnc plug uh, very common in uh, test equipment semi-rigid cables uh, for high frequency devices especially the professional electronics look at how it is built the, the regular DE9 that uh, that was uh, most common on uh, serial connectors uh, it's still widely used and some cables the cat6 um, stranded flexible cable and the sata cable and uh, those cables are very complex in uh, how they are constructed the hdmi the vgi the regular usb cable pretty simple and that's uh, that's how the plugs looks on the inside and the socket but um, this would be the three point something uh, super speed cable that uh, like you see here it's not it's no longer four wires it's way more of them individually shielded and let's move to the part that is um, the most interesting thing in, in the book for me 
Nexus, vacuum tubes. All that uh, kind of goodness. Try some different lights to have a better view. Starting with uh, very simple components, just a neon lamp. Moving on to some more complex stuff. Some of my favorite uh, display devices are the Nixie tubes. Basically a stack of uh, cathodes with um, a common anode. Those cathodes uh, are shaped uh, to form numbers and um, the numbers um, are placed um, in such a way that um, they uh, intersect uh, one another in as few places as possible in order to keep them from uh, overshadowing the digits that are deeper in the stack. And this is how they are stacked. This one has uh, an intermediate uh, grid and can be driven as uh, a, um, a something like a multiplexed um, pair of uh, two Nixies, like uh, like there, there are five cathodes and two anodes and by switching the anodes uh, you can uh, choose uh, between one of the two numbers um, that are coupled with, uh, with one uh, lead with one pin on the tube's base. the 12AX7 or ECC83 very common preamp tube everyone uh, into hi-fi uh, tube amplifiers or guitar amplifiers will know these a vacuum fluorescent display like the one that I have right here That's the thing. And uh, the VFD has um, a uh, cathode uh, made of uh, very thin wire. You may see the single wires uh, going across the tube. Um, this is a hot cathode um, directly heated. And then there are grids uh, for every character, every digit, and uh, and there are anodes uh, covered with phosphor for all the segments. And the way you drive those displays is by multiplexing the the grids and the anodes. Then the cathode uh, should um, be powered with uh, alternating current. The teeny tiny CRT, most often uh, you can see in CRTs um, in old um, TVs and um, monitors. Those are a lot larger. You can see CRTs uh, in uh, older uh, oscilloscopes. They are also quite large, but uh, this uh, viewfinder CRT is, uh, is so tiny that uh, you really have to look very close at the screen to make out uh, any details. There's also some uh, optics uh, to help you see what's displayed. I once uh, saw uh, one of um, those viewfinder CRTs live and uh, Believe me, the way uh, the way they uh, managed to pack all the structure inside of it, uh, it's magnificent. It's a thing of beauty and a joy forever. This is a larger one. 
Or maybe is this um, the same as we can see here? Looks like it looks like this is the same. It's how it's built. Then the deflection coils, uh, horizontal and vertical, clearly visible. The Vennard cylinder, the the cathode uh, of the tube, the grids. This uh, mercury third switch uh, looks quite like a, a neon lamp. <coughs> this one is uh, very small, but uh, there are third switches uh, capable of uh, switching tens of amperes. I uh, had uh, to, I had some experience with um, with the third switches uh, when I was working with the monotype um, casting machines. They used the temperature regulators for the for the hot metal melting pot. The temperature regulator had a um, capillary tube uh, filled with uh, mercury vapor that uh, contracted and expanded uh, and then there was uh, a uh, spiral bellows and then the bourdon tube that uh, extended uh, and when it uh, extended uh, far enough um, it would tilt the mechanism of uh, the temperature regulator tilting the mercury switch uh, and uh, turning the heater off. A very simple and clever electromechanical device. Wire wand resistors uh, a little bit different but uh, working on the same principle as, uh, as this one and some carbon composition resistors so uh, they are quite prone uh, to moisture ingress uh, on the end that's why uh, Paul Carson uh, always recommends to replace them and some uh, silver and mica capacitor goodness. This is uh, sealed very, very well against uh, all kinds of uh, moisture, so um, they will not go bad um, as, uh, as fast as the paper capacitors um, without uh, any sealing. Also a dipped uh, silver mica that you can uh, buy uh, in uh, vintage parts stores. Um, this is pretty much the favorite of um, guitar amp builders. And also uh, an MLCC, but uh, encased in a glass tube. Intermediate frequency in transformers and filters. This kind is uh, very small, uh, meant to be incorporated in uh, PCB radios, but um, the very old stuff uh, was uh, a lot larger. That's uh, how um, an IF filter looks like uh, on the inside. Uh, this is the one from a radio that I am restoring right now. Incandescent bulbs. They were very obvious uh, a few decades ago, but now they are being phased uh, out of use. I'm. My generation might be one of the last one to see them in operation. Flash bulbs uh, with uh, magnesium wire that uh, 
burns uh, inclusively, explosively in the oxygen atmosphere when uh, heated up to a, a certain uh, temperature. The reaction is very quick, but uh, gives off um, a lot of light. That's why um, they are used uh, as uh, flash bulbs. Photoresistors, um, those uh, are not uh, encapsulated in a uh, plastic enclosure. There is something like uh, clear epoxy over them, but uh, <coughs> it's not really a uh, case. This is uh, more of an uh, encased uh, resistor it has a package. This is the old uh, detection device uh, from uh, from the old uh, crystal radials. Those things uh, didn't even uh, need uh, any power. You could uh, use them for listening to radio stations that um, give uh, a strong signal where you are. Sometimes this is enough on uh, high impedance headphones to to be able to receive uh, a program. Germanium diodes uh, quite similar to what we saw before. A beautiful metal case uh, operational amplifier. Mu I seven oh two the 60s and 70s stuff. Erasable, programmable, run read-only memory. If you shine uh, ultraviolet light, um, the content will go to slash dev slash now. Then the modern uh, counterpart uh, is the electrically erasable uh, PROM and uh, the flash memory. And this is a real thing of beauty and joy forever. I have one in my Simtron 220 calculator. I, uh, I saw a film um, of uh, the, the Polish uh, electronic uh, factory named Elvro. There was um, there was a scene where a worker made those uh, memories, those uh, teeny tiny ferrite beads. Um, you put a number of them uh, on every column and then uh, move them. First, uh, if you have like um, 10 rows, then you put um, 10 beads uh, on a column <coughs> and uh, thread the first row from the bottom one and uh, turn around um, the, the beads in the second one and uh, thread another row and on all that stuff uh, and so on and so on until you go to the last one and then you add uh, some uh, some other wires that go through all those beads and the diagonal ones Building something like this, um, it takes uh, hours and hours and hours of uh, very precise work. It takes a lot of patience. An uh, IBM SLT module, I've never seen one. And uh, that's, uh, that's the technology that uh, allowed us to fly over there to the moon for the first time. 1960s uh, integrated circuits that uh, 
if you take a closer look, uh, this uh, reminds you of uh, the of the pads uh, for surface mount uh, transistors because in fact uh, those are surface mount transistors uh, and resistors that go into this ceramic package an analog panel meter quite common and quite beautiful even today you can buy uh, new meters but uh, the old stuff uh, it has uh, it has its charm, it has its uh, aesthetics, and uh, just look at uh, how it is built. Also, uh, an almost uh, forgotten tag. Uh, if you have uh, a tape machine, uh, whether cassette player or reel-to-reel, -reel, then uh, you will have one or, or two of those uh, tape heads. This is how they look like, this is how they are built. They have um, a very narrow uh, slot in between the um, poles. And um, the narrower the slot, um, the higher the audio quality is, the more precise the component uh, will be. The more bandwidth, the, the less distortion. HDD heads uh, pretty similar in the principle of operation to the magnetic tape heads. Another kind of uh, HDD head. And let's move on to something more complex like filament bulbs. Just a string of multiple um, teeny tiny LEDs um, in uh, in series and uh, encapsulated in uh, epoxy single-sided uh, printed circuit boards very common but uh, not as common as uh, double-sided boards this is a um, completely through-hole technology board but um, nowadays uh, most of them are surface mount technology multi-layer boards uh, almost exclusively surface mount uh, technology this is uh, the kind of uh, PCB you encounter in, in devices that uh, have uh, very complex shapes um, and uh, probably also uh, have movable parts inside like the CD players and uh, and cameras and uh, monitors uh, between the on the board and uh, and the LCD matrix uh, you will find a few of them then zebra leads uh, for the LCDs that's how the micro SD card looks uh, when cut through basically a uh, printed circuit board the cheap uh, integrated circuits that are in fact part of uh, the calculators and uh, all that stuff uh, this is a chip on board uh, quite similar to the chip on board uh, leds that's how the credit card looks on on the inside and uh, the near-field uh, communication with an induction loop going across the, the card on the perimeter that uh, acts as an antenna also uh, 
the chip is powered by uh, induction. And this is how the smartphone looks like on the inside. If you haven't ever seen one. Take some time to appreciate the complexity of the device. Of how well it can be built. Ethernet transformers and uh, voltage converters um, made uh, as uh, a simple potted module. This is in fact an uh, electronic device um, in an um, enclosure. Seven segment um, displays. Uh, those uh, colorful parts uh, are made um, by um, powering the um, transparent uh, plastic um, into the cavities um, of, uh, of the plastic case. Those are beautiful devices. All gold, uh, very intricate. Used in uh, professional tech. And here also a matrix display. If you took a look at the full bridge rectifier, you can see the diodes placed um, between the wires um, below and uh, above them. And here it is the same uh, design uh, multiplied uh, by the number of diodes. The vintage bubble display, also a beautiful thing. And some other professional grade um, display devices. An uh, integrated circuit that even has uh, a quartz oscillator inside the package. I never realized um, that uh, you could place a uh, quartz um, in an IC and this is a quartz oscillator in a uh, separate uh, metal package and some other thing of beauty very advanced technology and some even more advanced technology a work of art, a thing of beauty, a joy forever I could say that the book's uh, loveliness increases, it will never pass into nothingness. It's more and more beautiful as we go. Looking at uh, all those uh, traces, all those materials, all those designs. And uh, this is probably the most interesting part of the book of how it was made in order to make all those uh, cross sections uh, of um, the teeny tiny electronic components uh, they were they were cut um, with a slowly rotating diamond diamond disc so that uh, thermal damage is uh, avoided if you cut it with a dremel then uh, you would heat it up uh, so much that uh, it would melt or or have discoloration the creators wanted to avoid this so they used a slowly moving diamond disc or a mill then they uh, sanded uh, the surface and polished it uh, so that uh, it's as, as smooth as uh, possible. Sometimes uh, cleaning the parts with a cat whisker, hopefully no cats were harmed in the process of making this book. And uh, if the parts were mm -hmm. 
if the pets had uh, anything loose inside of them, uh, something that would be easily dislodged, uh, then uh, it was spotted in epoxy, mounted on the stems. Not all those parts made it through the process of photographing with some great quality equipment like a professional grade uh, Canon uh, digital single lens reflex uh, camera and uh, some uh, custom made um, equipment for focusing it. Then uh, post processing was, um, was done Sometimes even uh, they used uh, a process uh, pretty sim similar to the high dynamic range uh, rendering, only not, breakers, not bracketing the exposure but the focus and uh, putting a uh, composite image uh, out of uh, a few shots, providing an equal um, depth of field uh, on uh, the whole uh, picture that uh, you get as a result of this process. Pretty complicated and I appreciate it a lot. I think it is the best uh, electronic engineering uh, inside book um, that I have read uh, in a few years. Just looking at it, uh, I uh, I just uh, I just feel so so moved. Uh, makes me want to cry out of joy. So uh, if by any chance um, you can uh, get your hands uh, on uh, on this very book, I highly recommend it. Whether having it for yourself or just uh, borrowing it from someone uh, or a library, taking a look at it, it's uh, it's very well worth it. I'm very happy to have it uh, right here in my lab. And uh, that's what I wanted to share about uh, about this uh, absolutely um, beautiful work of art.